Chris Busby. I'm the, I'm the Scientific Secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risk, uh, and I'm a visiting professor at the University of Ulster in Northern Ireland. I am Sigyn Meder, board member of the Iraq Solidarity Association in Stockholm. I'm an expert on the health effects of low doses of radiation, in particular on the health effects of uranium from weapons use. You have shown us a photo from a child with birth defects. So a child with a cyclopi in the middle of, of uh, her f uh, face. Could you describe this child and what is wrong and why? See, I don't think these are normal congenital malformations. I don't think they're the sort of thing that you normally get. And, and I think the reason is that they're not, they're not actually congenital malformations at all. They're what you would call congenital malformations, but, they're, but they are in fact, I think, caused. They're developmental. They're, they're in utero, or what's called teratogenic effects. So I th my own feeling is that this is what's happened is that the explosion has taken place and produced a multitude, uh, billions of these little nanoparticles of ceramic uranium. And the uranium has then passed into the mothers of, of, of these children, in fact all of the women, and <coughs> gone into the lymphatic system. Uh, and these particles then just float about inside the body through the lymphatic system. And when the, when the, when the woman is, is pregnant, the babies then start to grow. Now, if one of these, materi one of these particles gets into, the, to, into the, the fetus through the placenta, because th these are very small particles, they can get through the placenta, I believe. When this happens, then it starts to irradiate one part of the, of the, of the blastocyst, or the fetus, which is of different sizes, depending upon when it gets through. And so when it does that, it causes a perturbation, it causes a change in the way in which that part of the body of the fetus develops. Because what you often see in these congenital malformations from uranium is that a large proportion of the, of the, of the body is okay, but then suddenly one part of it has gone crazy and started to grow, grow in different directions. So you, you would have, like, a, uh, for example, the cyclops eye child that I show the photo of, and I don't normally like showing these photos. I've got a huge number of these photos and they're terrifying, terrifying. Hmm. Um, but I thought I'd show one, and this is a child that looks perfectly normal, <coughs> and then the arms and the legs are all there, the fingers are all the right number, <coughs> and if you didn't see the head, you would think the child was normal. But then when you see the head, what happens is the nose is growing out of the top of the forehead, and there's one eye below the nose with two pupils. It's truly quite extraordinary. So what I think happened there was that at some quite late stage in the development of this child, you know, as, as this part of its body was, was growing, there happened to be a uranium particle, one of these nanoparticles there, and it was irradiating the tissue and sending strange signals to the developmental part of those cells so as to, to, to scramble their, what it is that they normally would do, is to go into two eyes, so it went into one eye with two pupils. So that's what I think is happening there. It is a war crime to use weapons with long-term disastrous effects on people's health. This is one of the many U.S. war crimes committed in Iraq, and the people, people will suffer from it for generations to come. This weapon should be banned. These occupiers have intentionally destroyed the Iraqi state's institution historical and cultural heritage. More than one million people have died because of the occupations since the US-British coalition attacked Iraq. 
We want the world to know about this and support the demand that war criminals should be pro prosecuted. However, we manage, we will try to manage with it. They might be presidents, prime ministers, and whoever they are, they should be prosecuted for their crimes. And we also want Sweden to act more and better. Sweden has not been very good at these questions. Thank you.